A major update for Google Ranking Factor signals arrives in May 2021 and will incorporate Core Web Vital scores to help determine rankings in search engine results pages. The three main metrics that the update will be taking into account is Largest Contentful Paint, or LCP, First Input Delay, or FID, and Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS. It's fair to say that all of these are quite technical terms, so if we were to simplify them, Largest Contentful Paint is Loading, First Input Delay is Interactivity, and Cumulative Layout Shift is Visual Stability. If you want to find out how your website's performing for these three metrics, you can do that by running your website through a range of tools including PageSpeed Insights, Search Console, and Lighthouse. You'll find a link to these three tools in the description down below. In this video, we'll be looking at how to improve the three key Core Web Vitals scores and give you some tips to optimize your website so that you won't experience a huge drop off in rank when the May 2021 update goes live. Make sure to click the like button if you learned something new and subscribe to see more videos like this. Also, don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. The PageSpeed Insights tool is the easiest way to get a snapshot of the page speed for your website and give you some focus and direction on the areas that you need to optimize. Using this tool for your website will give you a score out of 100 for both desktop and mobile. You'll notice that any of the Core Web Vital specific metrics will have a little blue flag to the right of them. One of the best and often overlooked tools within the PageSpeed Insights is the Lighthouse Scoring Calculator. You can find this calculator in the PageSpeed Results page after running a test, directly under the lab data at the top of the page. The Lighthouse Scoring Calculator has a ton of different sliders for all the major page speed metrics that give you results that are specific to your website. Looking at the Lighthouse Scoring Calculator, we can see the different scores that relate to our core web vital scores. Improving the largest contentful paint will obviously improve your LCP score. Improving the time to interactive and total blocking time will improve your first input delay score. And improving the cumulative layout shift score will obviously improve the CLS score. Adjusting the sliders will give you a realistic idea of how much work and effort will need to be dedicated to the different core web vital areas and should help you prioritize which work needs to be done first, whether that's quick wins or investing in long-term optimization options. So now that we've measured our scores and identified the areas that need improvement, how do we actually make the changes that are going to help us achieve and improve our core web vital scores? Short answer, we need to optimize. In a perfect world, we'd be able to give you a checklist of everything you need to do to optimize your site to get a perfect score. Unfortunately, optimizing websites to improve core web vital scores is complicated and the things that need to be done vary from website to website as every website is built differently and has a unique set of issues that will need to be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. What we can do, however, is highlight some of the things that you need to look out for and some ways that you might be able to fix them. You might be able to fix some of these issues yourself However, a lot of them does cross firmly into technical SEO territory, so you may need to use a developer if your website coding isn't up to scratch. Let's start by taking a look at optimizing for largest contentful paint. The most common reasons for a poor largest contentful paint are slow server response times, render blocking JavaScript and CSS, slow resource loading times, and client-side rendering. Let's start by looking at how we might be able to improve slow server response times. The longer it takes for a browser to receive content from the server, the longer it will take to render anything. A faster server will improve load speed, including LCP. Start by improving how and where your server handles content. Use the metric time to first byte to measure your server response times. Next, Let's look at render blocking JavaScript and CSS. 
Before website browsers can render any content, they need to pass HTML into a DOM tree. As a side note, DOM stands for Document Object Model, and the DOM tree is the data representation of the objects that make up the structure and content of a document on the web. The HTML parser will pause if it encounters any external style sheets or synchronous JavaScript tags in the DOM tree. These are both render blocking resources, which will delay your largest contentful paint. You should review your CSS and JavaScript and defer or remove anything that's unnecessary to speed up the loading of your website content. For slow resource loading times, you want to optimize the content on your page to make sure it loads as fast as possible without compromising its quality. There are a few ways to ensure your content files are loaded as fast as possible. This includes optimizing and compressing images, preloading important resources, compressing text files, adaptive serving, which is delivering different assets based on network connection, and caching assets using a service worker. Finally, there's client-side rendering. Many sites use client-side JavaScript logic to render pages directly in browsers. Websites that are rendered on the client side can have an effect on LCP if a large JavaScript bundle is used. If optimizations aren't in place to prevent it, users may not see or interact with any content on the page until all the critical JavaScript has finished downloading and executing. Some things you can do to mitigate this issue involves minimizing critical JavaScript, using server-side rendering, or using pre-rendering. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the things that you can do to optimize your first input delay Core Web Vitals score. You'll notice that some of the recommendations between all three metrics have some crossover, which shouldn't be too surprising, as ultimately, we're trying to optimize page speed, and each of these elements are fundamentally linked. Whereas first contentful paint and largest contentful paint are both metrics that measure the time it takes for content to visually render or paint data onto a web page, they don't actually measure responsiveness. First input delay is the metric that measures how long it takes until a user can actually interact with the page. This is not simulated data and actually measures a real user interaction. It's important to note that improvements to total blocking time will tend to see improvements to first input delay. That being said, the main cause of first input delay is heavy JavaScript execution. Making improvements to how JavaScript passes, compiles, and executes on your web page will reduce the first input delay core web vitals score. The reason why users can't interact with your page is because the browser can't respond to input while executing JavaScript on the main thread. The main thread is where a browser processes user events and paints. You can view the main thread as a waterfall in your browser when inspecting a page by clicking on Network and viewing the JS or JavaScript tab. Make sure that you hard refresh the page to get an accurate display of how everything on the page loads in and can identify when some of the issues may be. There are a few ways that you can improve the JavaScript execution. The first is by breaking up long tasks, which is breaking down long running code into smaller asynchronous tasks. Next is optimizing your page for interaction readiness by improving first and third party script execution and data fetching. You can also try using a web worker, which helps work around a blocked main thread, which can be one of the main causes of input delay. One other thing you can try and do is reduce JavaScript execution time, which involves limiting the amount of JavaScript on your page. This in turn will reduce the amount of time that a browser will need to spend op executing JavaScript code which will speed up how fast the browser can begin to respond to user interactions. Just remember that when looking to improve your first input delay score, the optimizations to improve total blocking time should also improve first input delay. 
The final metric that we want to optimize to help maintain and improve ranking is our web page's cumulative layout shift score. By improving this, we will help to maintain the stability of the layout of the page as different elements load in, avoiding sudden layout shifts and ultimately improving the user experience. The most common causes include having images without dimensions, on-page ads, embeds and iframes without dimensions, dynamically injected content, and web fonts causing issues. Let's look at each of these in a bit more detail. First, always include width and height size attributes on your images and video elements. Next, ensure ads, embeds, and iframes are inserted to your web page in the most user-friendly and most unobtrusive way possible to ensure stability as the DOM loads in. Next, you should ensure that any dynamic content is not inserted above existing content unless it appears in response to a user interaction. Doing this will ensure that any layout shifts that occur are expected. Downloading and rendering web fonts can affect your CLS score in two ways. First, the font may need to be swapped to a new font. This is known as FOUT, which is flash of unstyled text. The second could be that invisible text is displayed until a new font is rendered. This is known as flash of invisible text. Preloading fonts can offset this issue. Finally, another thing that may cause cumulative layout shift is any actions waiting for a network response before updating the DOM. Improving your HTTP response and elements synchronization will help to counter this issue.